So we're here at Mobile World Congress 2014. And uh, who are you? Hi, I'm Richard Collins. I'm a product manager for Mobile at Canonical. So uh, what's the latest with Ubuntu? Uh, our big announcement is launching hardware partners that are going to ship Ubuntu as a smartphone OS later this year. That's our big announcement of the week. So we can see here, right here, behind the glass, uh, yeah. there's a... Uh, I think so, but you know, we can't really tell them. There's BQ, there's a uh, Meizu. Yeah, so our, our two announced partners no, this, uh, are Meizu and BQ. So Meizu has... Uh, uh, some, it's been very successful in China, BQ, uh, similarly so in Western Europe. So our, our initial focus for smartphones uh, this year will be in China and uh, BQ with those two um, handset manufacturers. All right, so how, how soon are they launching? We hope Q3 this year. So we've been working pretty hard with them um, up to the announcement in terms of making sure that um, we're fully on board in terms of hardware, adaptation, integration, and uh, we're very, very close to um, being able to announce exactly when that, those shipments will take place. Could you explain a little bit uh, the whole uh, uh, concept with Ubuntu on phones and tablets and uh, what's called uh, the, the, the whole plan? What's the plan? What's the master plan? What do you want to do? So Ubuntu as an OS is already very well established. Um, it runs on PCs. That same OS has now been adapted to run on smartphones and tablets. So as a, uh, as a f looking to the future, what we're talking about here is a single OS that will easily scale onto different types of devices. That makes it great for hardware manufacturers because they can use one code base in order to build lots of different types of devices. It's great for application developers because they can use a single SDK to develop an application that will easily run on different devices, give different user experiences. Um, it means that there's a, a, a very solid model for, ha for all ha handset manufacturing um, and TV manufacturers. That's another way which you can go wearables, so it's about a single OS that can adapt to many different types of form factors. So how small does it adapt to? Like, do you still need a fast CPU or you can go all the way to wearable, you say? It can go all the way down to wearables and embedded devices. It's a very interesting um, OS when it comes to all of the discussions that are taking place right now about the internet of everything and how embedded devices need to be um, running a, a, an OS, so it's, it's entirely scalable in the sense that it can run on embedded devices all the way through to tablets, smartphones, PCs, smart TVs, entirely scalable. Entirely scalable. So Ubuntu is not like a fat Linux or something. It's like very slim. It can run. Does it run on like something like routers and stuff already or? Uh... So I mean, there aren't specific examples of that. But I mean, it's about providing a a device, a basis for devices. Um, intelligent devices, less intelligent devices, embedded devices, entertainment devices, um, anything where you need the, um, the richness of a UI, um, the uh, flexibility to deliver lots of different types of content. Um, it's, it, it's, it's very relevant in those, um, in those cases. So how do you, how do you make the, the UI? How do, where, where do you make it? Did you make it in the UK or uh, how did you it, develop that? How do you... We have a brilliant team of developers and designers that are responsible for our, our user interface. So it's, uh, it's getting improved all the time? Faster, better, new features? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, it's open source, so everybody's available to see it. I mean, it, you can, for the smartphone, you can see it evolve um, on the public images that we make available for this, this Nexus 4. Um, you can see it evolving on the desktop with each release, our six monthly releases. It's, it's a fundamental part of what we do about um, uh, the basis of our, our UI. It's very, it's, it's very important to us. So every time there's a new Ubuntu on desktop, it's also upgraded on the phone? So every time there's, um, at the moment, that, that, that development path is managed separately, but the, um, the, the, the coming together of, of that development is, uh, is later on this year. Later on this year? Sure. So, uh, as well as the faster ARM processors, just going to enable the tiny phone to do everything? Sure. I mean, for a, for a smartphone perspective, you can think about Ubuntu um, running on smartphone hardware that you can use as a, as a PC. So, this is what the Ubuntu Edge tried to achieve with its um, objectives uh, last year about having one piece of hardware that will act as your smartphone and as your, and as your, as your PC. 
Um, that vision is still very much of what we're trying, of which we um, we will um, look to achieve. Um, so it, it, it's a very specific part of what we do in terms of Ubuntu being a convergent OS. It's a it, it's a very um, important part of our vision. So selling hardware that was cool. Did you uh, ship? We weren't successful in reaching that that target. We we came close. Came uh, close. It, it, But it so you didn't ship attention. for those that wanted them. You're not going to do that. You you needed the target. Not in not in the, in the context of that particular edge campaign. No, that's um, that's uh, that's not going to be uh, advanced any further. All right. Uh, could you explain a little bit about uh, when people get involved with Ubuntu? What can they look forward to as a, kind of like the business model or the monetization systems? And uh, is it like an app store that monetizes or uh, what? What other things can Uh, hardware maker, Meizu, what are they looking forward to in Meizu's, making more money? Meizu is looking for a certain degree of customization that they can um, use to promote services that, are, that they know are important to their user base. Um, and they can rely on us to make sure that the, the core capabilities that they want for those services to work are maintained by us, while they just focus on the user experiences and the services and the content and those sorts of things. So they, they, they want to rely on a partner that is in tune with what they want to do and achieve with their hardware, um, without any conflict. So that's the main reason why Meizu are on board and um, other OEMs as well. Is it Qualcomm CPU inside or secret or? The MX3 Meizu device is Exynos. Exynos? Yes. Five, Exynos 5. The uh, octa-core. Uh, or? Not sure actually. Not sure. Yeah, it's, uh, right. So it's what you provide ma mainly is support? A service that is support, right, for the company, or is it licensing, or how does it work? We, we license the OS to the hardware manufacturers, so they, they will they will pay us a, a very competitive per unit licensing fee for shipping our, our software on their hardware. Is it much more competitive than, let's say, Windows Phone and stuff like that? Yes. All right. So looking forward to uh, more hardware.